So we're still a ways away from mushroom hunting season by, you know, you can probably tell by all the snow behind me. Um, it is halfway through March, but it's still really, really cold outside and it's going to be a long time uh, before I'm going to be finding mushrooms. But I thought it'd be fun to put a little video together to talk to you about, um, you know, some, some tips to get ready for mushroom hunting season and some of the mushrooms that we're going to be uh, going out to hunt very, very soon as soon as the snow melts and we get closer to spring, summer, and fall because even though it doesn't feel like it, uh, for us anyways, it is just around the corner. So first of all, you might be wondering if there's any special tools and equipment that you might need in order to go out hunting for mushrooms or if you can just basically put on your boots and head out into the woods and see what you find. And although that is a pretty reasonable approach, you can have a lot of success that way. There is some kind of tools and equipment uh, that might help you out a little bit and might make your mushroom foraging a lot easier. And first of all, too, before I get excited about mushroom season, I always got to remember that a good mushroom season also means a bad mosquito season. And I don't know about you guys, but around here where I am, the mosquitoes can be absolutely relentless. Uh, here's a picture of last year I had some strategies in order to kind of help deal with the mosquitoes and that involved a full-on head net. I had my hat on that would keep that net away from my face, had full sleeves uh, and I even had gloves on at you know some points uh, although in this picture I'm not wearing gloves and what you can't see in the picture is a ton of bug spray that I also used and that actually allowed me to go in the woods and be able to hunt for mushrooms because otherwise it is absolutely basically impossible uh, to spend more than a couple minutes out here especially when it's really wet in the summer uh, with all the mosquitoes. One thing I haven't figured out though and if you have any tips for me feel free to leave them in the comments below but I haven't figured out how to uh, protect my dogs from mosquitoes yet so you know I can't really put a big head net on them but I don't want to spray them down with bug spray uh, but they are my best foraging buddies so uh, if you have any tips for how to keep mosquitoes off of dogs that would be really cool to let me know. So first thing uh, for mushroom foraging is make sure uh, you have a strategy to avoid all of the mosquitoes. Uh, second thing is make sure you have a really good knife. Now believe it or not there are uh, mushroom hunting knives or knives that are specifically made for going out and hunting mushrooms. I have a couple different ones. Um, they're, they're really, really good. And one of the things is they have a brush on the end of them to kind of, you know, brush some of the dirt off of your mushrooms. Um, but they also just have a nice sharp blade with a good hook on it. So you can kind of dig out the bottom of some mushrooms if you really want to get the whole thing out. Um, and they're just, you know, a really great lightweight knife to have. Um, you can always just pick mushrooms out of the ground as well, but it's nice to have a knife to kind of get a clean break from some of the mushrooms that you're trying to harvest. The next thing you want to have, and some people think this looks a little goofy, but honestly, a nice mushroom basket is absolutely perfect. Even just like a wicker basket, uh, it's great to keep all of your mushrooms in there. And you don't want to just toss your mushrooms into a plastic bag because your mushrooms will sweat and pretty quickly they'll start to deteriorate. But if you leave them in a basket or even like a mesh bag, um, it'll be nice to kind of keep your mushrooms nice and fresh so they don't deteriorate before you get them home. And I do have a bag uh, that isn't a basket. It's kind of a hybrid between a bag and a basket. I got it from Modern Forager at Telluride last year and it works really, really good. The good thing is you can fold it up and put it in your backpack or take it traveling with you so you don't have to carry this big bulky basket around with you everywhere you go. So a knife and a basket are two really good things to have for when you're going out mushroom foraging. The next thing you're going to want to have is a really nice mushroom guidebook, uh, but not just any guidebook. I kind of hesitate to recommend guidebooks because it will really depend on your local area, where you live, and the mushrooms that grow uh, around you. So um, there's lots of different guidebooks, but you should find one that's specific to your state or specific to your province or region so that you know the mushrooms in that book are going to be relevant to what you're going to find. There's a lot of mushrooms that I find here that you might not find where you're at and vice versa. So uh, make sure you have a guidebook with you and become familiar with the local mushrooms in your area. Now that's also more important is to just become familiar with all the mushrooms that actually grow in your area. And one of the best ways to do that is to hook up with your local mycological society. Um, now is the time to start planning that. Sign up for your local mycological society. See what kind of events that they're having so that you can uh, go out with them, go out on some of the early forays, meet some people who really know the mushrooms in your area and can really help you uh, identify certain species. And number one, it will save you a lot of time because you know they'll show you where to go they'll show you what to look for but it will also be a lot safer and you'll feel a lot more comfortable harvesting and eating some of the mushrooms that you find because if you just look at a mushroom in a guidebook and then you go you know cook it up in your kitchen uh, you might be a little nervous uh, and that's fair enough because some mushrooms can make you really sick some mushrooms are actually you know deadly so if you but if you go out hunting with you know your mycological society and a group that really knows what they're doing you're going to feel a lot more confident you're going to save a lot of time and uh, you'll become a much better mushroom identifier. There's a great website from the North American Mycological Association that lists 
uh, all of the clubs. So you just find out, you know, look for your state and it will tell you the different clubs in your state and the contact information. So that would be my number one recommendation is to make sure that you connect with them and find out what kind of forays are happening. So the first mushrooms that you're going to find in the spring are the morels and they're always the early bird. They'll show up the first couple weeks after the snow melts as soon as that soil starts to warm up. And morels are just a really great mushroom for beginners to try to harvest because they're really easy to identify. And they're also really easy to find, especially if you know where to look, which just goes back to showing the importance of hooking up with a mycological society. But I already have a couple different videos on morels, on how to identify them, and on how to uh, distinguish them from some of the lookalikes. So you can definitely go check out those videos if you're interested in learning more about morels. The next mushrooms that you're going to tend to see kind of earlier in the spring and into the summer and fall are the oyster mushrooms and there's lots of different species of oysters so you need to find out what's kind of most common in your area or near you but oyster mushrooms will typically grow on dead or dying logs or on the side of dead or dying trees. The mushroom that grows around our area is uh, it grows on aspen trees and it is called Pleurotus populinus but there's lots of different oyster mushrooms so you got to find out what kind of mushroom oyster mushroom grows near you. Now, oyster mushrooms are a great gourmet mushroom, they're delicious, and there's not too many lookalikes. So again, they should be pretty easy to identify and you should be pretty comfortable going out in the woods and finding these things. Another gourmet mushroom that we're gonna be looking for here is the shaggy mane. And I just did a video on shaggy mane, so you can go check that one out if you wanna learn more about this mushroom. But basically, it's an easy to identify wild gourmet mushrooms that can be found in many urban environments. You can often find it growing in lawns, in, in city parks and, and stuff like that. So it's another easy to identify mushroom that you should, uh, you should be able to find kind of in your local area. Next up is puffballs. And again, here's another mushroom where there's tons of different species that all fall under the common name puffball. And again, these are really easy, easily recognizable and they are edible if young, when the insides of them are still white. Eventually the insides will kind of turn to spores, so if there's any kind of green or black on the inside, you don't want to eat it. But when the insides are still white, they're an edible mushroom. Um, just you want to make sure that if you're picking them really young, especially if they're small, that you want to cut them open uh, just so you can confirm that it isn't just the button form of another potentially poisonous mushroom. Another thing we'll be looking for really closely is red caps. And these are actually, uh, you know, there's an attempt to make these the provincial mushroom of Alberta. Uh, these are known as the Aspen Bolete and they are edible, but you know, in my opinion, they're not that good. Um, you know, they're edible, but I wouldn't call them amazing or super good gourmet mushroom. And I guess for some people, they can experience some stomach upsets with these mushrooms. So I know there's a sign at Telluride that said, that these mushrooms are edible for many, but diarrhea for some. So you might want to avoid them uh, if you might get stomach upsets. And especially if you can find porcini or Boletus edulis in your area, you know, they're a much better, way more tasty, in my opinion, mushroom that's way more worth looking for. So yeah, a short video, just a couple quick tips on different things that you should bring with you when you go mushroom foraging and different tips on how to actually find some good mushrooms in your area. So I hope you're getting excited for the summer, the spring, summer, and fall. And I know I certainly am. I can't wait to get out here and start picking some mushrooms. And I'm going to be doing a lot more videos. We're actually going out into the woods, finding mushrooms, and then kind of taking them home and cooking them and kind of sharing with you uh, what you're able to do with them. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope again, you're getting excited for mushroom hunting season, and I can't wait to see what we find.